what can I say? The sky is blue, the blossom is blossoming. <laughs> it must be time to plant some parsnips. So today we've got a bit of a back to front video here in that I've already been and gone and done what you're about to see, as you can probably tell by the colour of my hands. And that is, I've planted my parsnips. Now, we didn't actually get any done last year, which was a shame, you know, I think there was so much else to do. And then by sort of midsummer, everything went pear shaped and life took a bit of a strange turn for a good few months. Um, so yeah, there was nothing to follow through with them. But then you get, I'm probably getting the soil all over my face, am I? Okay, it's nothing new, <laughs> nobody looks. Um, and yeah, and, and then you sort of start seeing people, kids are just coming out to play outside now, it's been lovely and peaceful till now. Um, you can start seeing people harvesting them in about November, right through, well, right through to about now, to be honest. And part of me goes, ah, I want to get them in, I want to get them in. So anyway, um, we've got some nice fresh parsnip seeds, some tender and true. And uh, I'm going to show you the way that I plant them. And then I'm going to come back, have a little look around, come back. And I'm going to pot on some tomatoes. Okay. There's just been a blackbird sitting at the highest point right at the top of my tree there, singing his heart out. It's absolutely glorious. Of course I went and got the Camrys flown off, hasn't he? But they've got the most beautiful song. Well, I've just seen something in this otherwise rather boring patch of earth that's made my heart sing. And if I pull in a little closer. I'm saying pulling in, I'm actually leaning over. I'll probably fall over in a minute. Can you see it yet? Can you see it now? I'm going to point to it. There we go. Look at that cheeky little monkey. Oh, first asparagus spin. Now I don't know if you're in focus or whether I'm out of focus, so I'll pull back a little bit. We planted the asparagus in this bed last April. And uh, of course, you're not supposed to pick it during the first couple of years to allow the crowns to build up um, their strength. But, oh, that is the sign of some good things to come. It's just so nice sitting here. You, uh, you can probably tell by the way I'm squinting. The sun's coming down from that side there. And, oh, it's just beautiful. I just like to sit here and listen to the birds all day. But these seeds won't plant themselves. Can you imagine if they did? That would be good, wouldn't it? I bet they can in the future. Sort of my, my imagination <laughs> starts wearing up. And there'll be some sort of machine. Well, I suppose farmers use them, don't they, where you can automatically... Yeah, actually, thinking about it, there was the seed drill, wasn't there, back in 1700 and something, started the agricultural revolution. I'm wittering now. What I'm going to do... Today, the seeds I'm going to be planting are my parsnips. Now, usually it's recommended to um, start them in the, the last week of April, but you know, what are we on now? Something like the 16th, 17th, something like that. So we're getting there. And the fact is, we've actually had several really nice warm days and the um, forecast for the next week is, is nice and warm as well. So I'm going to get them in. Obviously, if you hadn't had warm weather, you'd want to warm up your soil a little bit by using cloches. I never do that. And that's probably why I've never grown a decent parsnip. But um, I know that if you're worried about your germination, because they are notoriously difficult to start off, um, and people have got all different ways of doing it. You might want to dampen them first, dampen them overnight, do them in a little bit of damp compost until they've got a little little tail on and then plant them out then. But no, not me. I'm not doing any of that, which again, probably relates to my earlier comment about never growing a decent parsnip. I'm just going to shove them in. 
but not in any old way. I'm going to use two different ways and I'm looking already, I haven't brought a label up already. I'd like to put my labels in first. Anyway, I've got here Tender and True. Now, ever since I was a wee, wee person, I've heard of Tender and True parsnips. I think, I think, you know, I didn't really know you could get a different sort until fairly recently. So um, this actually says, so February to April, five to 10 centimetres apart with rows 45 to 90 centimetres apart. So what's that? One and a half to three foot. Um, harvest foot from October to February. For best results, sow in a loose open soil that has had all stones, etc. removed. Germination can be erratic. We'll try. So, this soil has been prepared beautifully. It's been raked to a fine tilth. It's somewhere that there's going to be brassicas on that side. Yeah, we're going to have brassicas on that side and all this half of this plot is going to be roots. So this section here is going to be our parsnips. And like I say, I'm going to use two different methods. I might bring you over here because you probably can't see. Quite a long way away actually and zoomed in. So I didn't bring the right tripod. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll bring you over. Oh, yep, I think you can see me now. <laughs> okay, let's just show you what I'm going to do. Oh, get comfortable, that's the most important thing. I can't get comfy, I'm in the wrong position. Right, okay, here we are. We have got the tender and true parsnips. And you can see before I take them out of the packet that they're very, very, very fine. That's rocky in the distance, by the way, not my tummy rumbling. Very, very fine seeds that are apt to blow away, but there isn't a, a wisp of a breeze today. So it's absolutely perfect sowing weather for parsnips. Oh, I can't get comfy. My leg's going to have to go there. It's probably in the way of the camera now, but there we go. Right. OK, my first method. Not by any means my own, been used by many, many people over the years, but I've never done it before. Right, I'm going to have to kneel up. Here we go. Okay, is dibber. Can you see that? That big dibber. Dibber you'd use to put bulbs in, probably about, if you wanted to go about six inches deep. A lot of people, um, or people I've seen, have used crowbars for this bit so they can get a nice deep hole. Oh, I've got a fly in my mouth. There we go. Oh dear. Oh. Um, or they've used uh, a dibber made from the end of a spade, you know, a spade handle or a fork handle, as Ronnie Cor Corbett used to talk about. But this at the moment is absolutely adequate for what I want it to be. I'm going to, you see, moving that round as well as I can to get a hole in the soil. I want to make sure that I'm pressing the sides. I don't know how much of this you can see, but I'm compacting the sides against each other so that when I pull it out, it's not all going to fill back in again. And then what I'm going to do, and this is quite a nice bit, I mean, that's, that's long enough for anyone's parsnip. <laughs> don't get me started. Right, okay. What I've got then is, if you remember, uh, on my last video, I was clearing out the pots on the little slabbed area and quite a lot of um, the compost could be used. Again, it's compost that was used last year to put things in. Um, the things have died off, so it's spent compost, if you like. And I'm going to use that for two reasons. It's very, very fine. If you didn't have any, what you could do is sieve some soil. So you don't want your stones or anything like that because then your, your roots are going to fork, aren't they, like carrots. And also, with it being spent compost, it's not too rich nutritionally uh, because I want root, I want the roots to be growing down looking for nutrition as opposed to be producing lots and lots of lo lovely lush leaves. That's tricky. Lovely lush leaves. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, can you guess? Can you guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to fill, oh look, I'm left handed as well, aren't I? Which is right in the way, I should have done it the other side. I'm going to use that. Oh, too much there. Uh -oh, press it down to within, I would say that's about an inch, inch and a half from the top of the soil, so from the level. That's about, ooh, about an inch down. 
you've got to be careful what you do, haven't you? It's about, yeah, about an inch down, so I'll press it down a little bit more. So now we've got a hole filled with lovely fine soil and it's time to open the parsnip seeds. And this is where <laughs> the weather gods suddenly decide to have a little bit of, bit of a breeze and play heck with me. Right, okay, can you see those? They are very, I can't see if you can see. They are very, very fine. Parsnip seeds. Oh, what shall I, set? What shall I do? Shall I do two or three? I'm going to do two. Parsnip seeds, like I said before, they're very erratic in their germination, but also they're about the only seeds that you can't keep. They last for about six months. I don't know when we got these. These were this year's. Yeah. So by year end 2000, 2000, 2022, that doesn't sound right, 2022. Okay, so actually that's two years away. So that's that theory out the, uh, out the window. But I've now got two seeds in there. And before I cover it up, I'm going to make my next hole. Where's my dibber, missus? About, mm, mm, about there. Okay, so exactly the same again. Well, I feel like I'm being all technical and scientific. So I'm talking about dibbers and compost. I know, I wasn't good at science at school. I'd like to do it again now, but physics was just ridiculous for me. Biology liked, human biology, I could understand that because things all fit together and work. But physics was all just gibbery, diddly widdly. <laughs> See, it just makes me go, it makes me gabble just even thinking about it. Right, okay, again, making sure I've got all that soil pressed. Now, you're looking at me here and probably thinking, Jane, you're taking a lot of time doing that. You're over, you've only got one past him so far. <laughs> but it's going to be worth it in the winter. Now, that, I haven't compacted that enough. That's all starting to fall back in. The soil on the top is quite loose. But there we go again. Spent compost, please, madam. There we are. Top it up. Press it down get your seeds out and clearly as well if the two seeds come up I'm just going to um, <clears throat> thin them out so that there's only one seed growing in each station because um, oh yeah what I'll do to do that is um, is snip the weaker seedling off with a pair of scissors because I don't really want to go pulling them out because of carrot fly. They're just as susceptible to carrot fly as carrots because they're in the same family. That's that one done. Um, yeah, and parsley. Who'd have thought, oh, I suppose parsley, yeah. When you think of your carrot foliage, it's very similar. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to carry on doing these. <laughs> I'll probably give up back to fall. I'll be fed up by then. I've told you I've got a very low boredom threshold. Look at this, I've got that in the sun so you can't see anything. Anyway, also rather than you have to watch me stick a piece of wood in the soil and wiggle about a bit, I'll come back to you when it's done. So there we have a staggered row of holes of various sizes filled with compost of various depths because to be honest I felt I ran out towards the end um, and with two seeds in each station all that remains to be done now is to cover them over give them a very very light water in and stick those labels in and in about two to three weeks hopefully fingers crossed We'll start seeing some leaves.
we were given a tray of loose head lettuce we were told the other day by a neighbour uh, not loose leaf lettuce although I don't know the variety so today we've planted it out and we've used little half pot bottles as little cloches to protect them from our friend the slug but also uh, the night temperatures because it is getting quite cold at the moment at night no frost yet but uh, cold enough so what do you think have you planted parsnips like that before was I doing it right I don't know uh, we'll soon see I've got, I've got to be honest by the time we got to the very end I keep saying we because Mike was here as well but by the time yeah we got to the very end of the row the um, the soil had got quite hard again which is ideal for parsnips in some ways but it was getting quite hard to put the dibber in all the way so Mike made some huge holes so it'd be quite interesting to see um, if the parsnips at his end could be any bigger than mine I hope not anyway they're in now and what's lovely is they're just going to be quietly getting on with germinating growing um, I am going to put another drill of parsnips. We've got some seeds left. I'm going to put another drill alongside them. Um, but yeah, just a straightforward drill with two or three, probably two seeds about three inches apart. Let's have a think. You've got to think, I was talking about this about, uh, was I talking about this last week? With the broad beans, referring to onions anyway, you've got to think about how big you want them. So, mm, maybe a bit bigger maybe four or five inches apart I'll think about it when I do it um, and just cover them up and see if actually if they grow any differently to the ones that I've just spent a lifetime <laughs> making holes for anyway let me know in the comments below if you've done it right what I'm going to do now or what I've actually started doing anyway I've got I know I've mentioned this before at home I've got one windowsill clearly we've got lots of windows but we've only got one windowsill that's broad enough to put seeds on even though we've got a table right up to it and that, that also gets a decent amount of light so it's really a juggling game at the moment so I've brought my tomatoes or some of them down I've started potting these on anyway these are my well they were my bloody butcher which I love saying because I think my mum thinks it's rude <laughs> And I've potted those in there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of those there. Um, these are sun gold. Now, as you might have seen in the last video, a neighbour very, very kindly donated as a tray of sun gold as well. So, oh, you know what? There's only four of them, and I've only got four pots left. I'm going to pot them up as well. I've got pink heart, which I'm quite excited about, Cherokee purple, <laughs> Soldaki. Soldaki and orange banana. Now I had a bit of an accident with my orange banana. I don't know if you can see from there, but um, I had it in my basket. Then I put something on top. So yeah, I've beheaded that one. So I do apologise. Well, I apologise. I'm apologising to my tomato. But yeah, orange banana. Anyway, these are all nice new varieties for me, apart from the sun gold. Oh, I've got Amish paste at home as well from Richard and Paul. They're doing really well, but they haven't got their true leaves yet. So. Yeah, these are all new varieties. I know the person who'll probably know all of them is Jazz over at Alternative Small Holding because she grows the most incredible range of tomatoes. And uh, so, yeah, let me know, Jazz, what do you think of these varieties if you're watching? So, true leaves. I need more space on my windowsill. It's going to give me <laughs> literally about a foot by six inches but believe you me I'll be packing things into that I soon what have I got on there today I know the other day I spent a long time in the back garden at home and sowed most of my squash um, I've sown lots of flowers again if Charlotte's wedding goes ahead at the end of August I want to make sure that we're not short of flowers so um, we are going to be absolutely overrun with them. I've got, at the moment, I've got cosmos, cosmos of all different colours. I've got dahlias. <gasps> oh, dahlias. I'll tell you in a minute. Um, oh, and I've got, I've got this really nice, oh, lots of different things. But I've got <coughs> this baby sunflower. I'm sorry, I've swallowed a fly, I think. This baby sunflower, I think it's called Little Ted. 
and it's um it's only a short sunflower but it gets really sweet like multi-headed flowers multi-headed flowers lots of flowers on it it's multi-headed um i thought that would be nice in bouquets and poses and that sort of thing so that's nice one thing i haven't sown yet <coughs> is my sunflowers for nick's allotment diary every year nick does um a sunflower challenge or he has for the last few years anyway and it's great it's really nice it's He's got three categories. It's really, really dead easy, you know. And the, I'm saying there's no competition about it. There is. But what I mean is there's no pressure. It's just, it's just really good fun. And he has three different um, categories. He has, and I think this is right, Nick. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments below if you're watching. Um, the tallest sunflower, the largest diameter head, which Nigel over at Muddy Boots, I think he nearly always wins that one. He's a huge. And then I think the other one was the um, the most unusual sunflower. Because, I, you know, until next competition, this is how we live and learn, I didn't know that you could get all different sorts of sunflowers. I just thought you got, like, you know, a flower on the top of a tall stick and they looked very nice. But um, I've got one at home. I think it's called Kong. And I think that, again, is a multi-headed variety, but also tall. And I'm really excited about that. One of, one of the things I'd love to do, and I would probably never get around to it, um, is have a whole patch of sunflowers together. And you know when you see them in the fields in France? Not that I've ever seen any in a field in France, but you know what I mean. And they follow the sun. I'd love to do a time-lapse video of that. I was thinking about doing it with my tomato seedlings. It's not quite the same, is it? But yeah, so whether I'd ever have enough to do that with, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, do go over. Again, it's such a simple premise, but it's such good fun. And it's great that Nick hosts it. So if you've got some sunflower seeds, have a look through your bird food. See if you've got any sunflower seeds in your bird food. Um, have a go it's a great thing to get kids involved in because you know you can talk about the giant beanstalk and that sort of thing <gasps> beans is another thing actually beans is another thing i haven't sown yet i will be sowing them direct i don't want to get those mixed up with those okay i will be sowing them direct this year because um i think it was three or four sowings last year all got munched and it was only because we had backups that we carried on we'd grown on in the in the greenhouse that we got any at all but it was a really really poor cropping year for beans so although i've got the broad beans in um i'll be waiting a few more weeks to get to the other beans i'm pointing over there because that's where i've started doing bean trenches okay right i'm going to bring this little fella over to you have a little look it's not a how do you do it video but if you look there I'm holding that by the leaf, which are tough little fellas. I do not want to be touching that stalk because all the goodness needs to go up from the roots, up through the stalk and out to the leaves. So yeah, try not to, uh, <laughs> try not to damage the root, says she who put something on it in her basket and squashed her orange banana. Okay, <clears throat> the other thing, if you're putting a tomato in soil, doesn't matter if it goes right up, or oh, this one's not going to, right up to the leaves because if you've grown them before, you'll know that it gets roots coming out all the way up the stem. So I'll bury it even deeper again when I transplant it next time, wherever it's going to go. Hopefully the polytunnel, oh, that's something else we've got to get done, you know. I want that done for May. Oh, it's nearly May. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm looking at that now over there as well and thinking, ooh, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, gets roots coming all the way up its stem. The more roots it's got, the more sturdy it's going to be. Good. All good. So things are sort of right. happening. They're just not happening in a very coordinated way. I'm sort of muddling through getting the seeds done, muddling through potting on, but I know I know things will all get done. There we are, make a hole. Very, very technical. Oh no, I've got, oh, I have got one more pot. Two more to go. Anyway, I hope you're all okay. It's weird, isn't it? Weird, weird times. You come down here and it's like, it's like there's nothing going on. It's like, um, 
that's all the fuss about, you know. You, you're away from the news, you're away from, I suppose, from all the anxiety and the, and the fear, and it is a lot of fear, a lot of people are feeling. And you come down, especially on a day like today when there's hardly been anyone else around, and it's just, it's like nature doesn't, that doesn't care. But nature's almost oblivious. It's just, it's just carrying on anyway. And that's why I do say, you know, now is the time to be just appreciating, appreciating what we've got. I mean, I think I'm pretty good in doing that anyway, really. But yeah, you know, take your time and just look at things a bit more. I'm saying this from the very, very privileged position of sitting in a lot allotment. As far as I know, no underlying health conditions. Um, my job, I do work, believe it or not, I do work. Um, I'm doing online, so, you know, that's keeping the money coming in. Mike's doing his online. So we're very, very privileged in that way. And I know there are many people who, who can't do that. And believe you me, I just, I know I've said before, oh, I've left, not the soil's fallen off that one. I'm gonna put it in anyway. A special big pot. But yeah, if you can, if you can do something, if you can grow something, if you can sit on your balcony, if you're on a balcony, you know, if you can see the person next door or the person over from you, try saying hello. It might be people you've never, ever spoken to before, but now's the time to do it. Now's the time to do it. You know, we all need a helping hand of various, various times. And uh, yeah. I think it focuses the mind. What we've, what we've got going on at the moment certainly focuses my mind on what's important and what's not. Anyway, though, saying that, <laughs> I'm just going to get back very quickly to this. It's just popped in my mind. I've actually had, just talking about appreciating things, I've celebrated two things this last week. The first one was my birthday, <laughs> which, as you can imagine, having a birthday during a, a, a lockdown you know, it's not the most sociable of times, you know, we'd usually have gone out with friends and had a drink and celebrated that way. But, but yeah, yeah. But I've got to say, <laughs> given the drawbacks, I actually had a really, really lovely day because things sort of trickled through. So messages trickled through and presents kept getting, one particular present was hooked onto the garden gate in the back garden. Um, you know, things were left on the front step and you know people have phoned and say look out your front door it was really really lovely um so yeah that was really nice and i think people tried especially hard i think people felt sorry for me i'm not the only one who's you know had a birthday recently <laughs> but yeah yeah it has been a bit weird but the other thing <clears throat> and i will shut up soon because there'll be owls coming out in a moment um is this week in fact was it sunday night I actually passed the 4,000 subscriber milestone and as much as I tell myself this is a hobby, it's not my job, as I say, you know, my job is part-time, I'm very lucky with that, um, but I don't make money from this, I mean, you, you know, not, not a lot, peanuts, it is peanuts, um, it's still, it's still really nice and it's still a milestone and even though I've been doing this now, for what seems like centuries. <laughs> I can't remember my first video. I think, was it 2015, 2016? Might have been 2017, I don't know. I think time flies, you get older. Um, but yeah, I, I still get just as excited now um, when I hit a milestone, when I get thumbs ups. I used to get upset about the thumbs downs, but depends what mood I'm in now. I just think, um, I think I know who they are as well. <laughs> or in my head I do anyway. Um, but yeah, the 4,000 for me was, was quite a milestone. And so I'd just like to say thank you so much. Whether you've been with me right from the very beginning with the no microphone and terrible sound and wind noise in every other, well, in every video, I think for the first year and a half, um, or whether you've just joined the channel recently, you know, it, uh, I hope you enjoy it. I really, really enjoy making them. As I said, it is a hobby for me. If I didn't enjoy making them, I wouldn't do them because there's a lot of time and effort goes into them, but I really enjoy sharing it with you. And it's lovely. 
crossing this milestone has just made me think it's worth it it's worth it so thank you so so much um i'm getting a bit getting a bit teary <laughs> It's really lovely. In fact, I'll tell you what happened. My daughter in London um, actually phoned me about half twelve Sunday night, well, Monday morning. She'd been watching the figures creep up. I said, Mum, you've done it. So much as I was thinking, I don't want, no, I haven't, officer, I'm not guilty. Um, she was, she'd been watching it, bless her, um, to be able to let me know when I reach 4,000. So yes, thank you very much. Get yourselves over to the Facebook page. It's really lovely. We've got a lovely crowd over there. Um, and at the moment in particular, you know, to be able to share things and talk to other people when any other form of communication really is, is scuppered or has been scuppered to a large degree um, is really lovely. So yeah, Facebook, Instagram, I'll put all the links below. But most of all, do take care of yourselves take care of others look out for each other if we can't do it now when can we and um yeah see you all again very very soon i've got to go now the moon's coming out <laughs> all right then see you soon bye